Let's get to the legal landscape. Our legal analyst, attorney Dan Adams, joins us every Monday morning to break down some of the biggest cases happening across Wisconsin and the country. Dan, uh, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Let's talk about a case that uh, really the whole country is talking about, that deadly massacre at Appalachia High School in uh, Georgia just last week. Uh, the 14-year-old suspected shooter was arrested. He's uh, expected to be charged as an adult with murder, but Police also arrested and charged his father uh, with a number of counts of murder as well. I was uh, kind of shocked at how quickly uh, that happened. Uh, it made me think about the Michigan school shooter case where we saw also the parents uh, arrested and charged in that case. Do you think that because we have that now precedent, that case law, that that's why we saw this arrest so, so quickly? Sure, well, yeah, this is shocking. Uh, to have another school shooting and for the prosecutors in Georgia to quickly within a, a, a day or two charge the father who I, I suppose uh, provided the gun or made the gun available to the school shooter uh, is kind of unprecedented. You bring up the Michigan case that took weeks for the prosecutors to go through text messages uh, and other evidence to see whether or not those parents had a direct tie and, and knowledge uh, about their son's intentions before they charged them. Now that case resulted in two separate trials and two different convictions. I should note that every state has its own separate criminal code with different formulations of something as simple as homicide, which you know is kind of a universal uh, uh, prohibition. But the way those laws are written are different in every state. And in Georgia, there is something called involuntary manslaughter. This is a homicide law that we don't have in Wisconsin, but it basically says anyone who causes the death of another human being, even without intention uh, by the commission of any unlawful act is on the hook for manslaughter. Again, that's something we don't have in Wisconsin. So God forbid we have a situation like what happened in Georgia. We don't have the same tool in our prosecutorial toolbox to go after that type of parent. But I do think that nationwide, there is a trend towards holding parents who don't uh, uh, you know, conceal or, or, or guard their firearms in a way that they should, knowing that their child may have uh, an issue. Uh, I think we're gonna see this trend uh, expand. Yeah, and prosecutors have said that Colin Gray, the father of that suspected shooter there in Georgia, gifted his son the same rifle that was used in the attack uh, uh, for a Christmas gift uh, just this past year. So much more to come uh, from that case as we continue to watch developments. Uh, Dan Adams, always great to chat with you. Thanks so much uh, for your insight this morning. We'll see you next Monday for more of The Legal Landscape.